Well, let's uh, recap. Uh, anyways, what time is it? Uh, I, we're probably out, out on time, right on time for the eight. Hey, guys, we all did time in the Supermax. Uh, not as inmates, but as inmates. Explain that one to him. Well, when he says we did time, we uh, did slave labor at the ADX. And we were inmates, right? Because, well, we were inmates at the camp doing slave labor for the ADX. So the labor for the ADX, FCI, and the USP. I never did any of those. No, I'm like, I did the USP once. I never went to the medium, and then I did slave labor at the camp. Sean? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, all right, here, we'll do this. All right. Yeah, we had to improvise. So, so like, we all been out in federal prison a few years, right? One of us left on probation, poor guy. Anyways. <laughs> But uh, we're still friends. A few years later, we were friends there. And uh, at a camp, a level one, they make you work. It's a it's a work it's a work camp. So we got the what privilege of working, I don't know, half a mile down the road to the ADX Supermax every day. Go through the security, go through the check you know, metal detectors, all that stuff. Then we're inside. We don't get to see the inmates, although sometimes you know it happens. But uh, we did everything from what. Uh, what do some people do their laundry? Some people, there's a recreation program, believe it or not. Remember those guys, they would make up oh, bingo yeah, games right. and stuff. Some people worked in medical, we worked in food. I did, uh, I was, uh, I worked in veggie prep, dish, dish room, and then my last job at the ADX was a medical orderly, which I met, yeah, towards the end. So I was one of the guys when they called you to the, to the gate. They're like, Mendoza, go back. I was like, ah. And then all the kitchen guys would be like. <laughs> what does a medical order you do? What, just empty the waste paper baskets for the doctors probably? <laughs> I never I never got I never got pulled in. Never. The one time I got pulled in, they let me hang out in maintenance, and I was just watching TV on the little box TVs for like two hours until they took me back at the 2 o'clock bus. You know, there's inmates who actually want to, do, want to rather be in ADX than at the USP. Cause they get their own their own room, they get their, their own TV. And nobody's gonna fuck with them, right? Uh, some people like that. They actually want to be there. I've heard they'll actually get in a fight at the state USB to be sent there. You know. Hey, you know, I heard that talk a couple times too. From the yeah, guards. yeah. It's peaceful. I mean, if you can get along with yourself. I don't know. One person was released from the One person has made it out. No, there's a guy named John. He's been he's, he leaves comments on here. Oh, really? a, a lot of people only get twenty years, thirty years. They get out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know what? And uh, there was one of the drivers. Remember the drivers? Told me that he what do you call it? That he'd done it a couple times. That he'd driven a couple dudes from the ADX oh, to the, sure. to the yeah. bus stop. They have a step down unit. I think your last five years you go to a little step down unit in there, and it, it's you know it's still high security, but they get to mingle for a little bit. It's kind of like have you ever been in a county jail where. They keep you locked up 18 hours and you get 20 minutes to go use the phone or take a shower. You got to yeah. pick that real quick. Yeah. It's a step down. Yeah, you know, like the that. driver told me what he called. He's like, yeah. He's like, I just dropped off one USB and one USB. And yeah, so I was like, damn. How, how, how much that feel to be on the bus next to a guy that was in the EDX? Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, thanks for tuning in, guys. Whoever's still here, I'm just going to Both working, okay. Anyways, uh, we were going to tell you guys some stories. And if anybody has a question about the ADX Supermax on there, just uh, you know, leave a comment. We got the live call in. If you want to call in, I'll put the number up in a minute. But uh, so we, well, we lost a few people, but some people are hanging in here. So uh, you guys, let's at, let's at your your most braggable story working at the ADX Supermax that you would tell somebody that you know, like like was curious. Something the most un 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 unheard of story that you could think of that goes on there. That goes on there. Um, besides that, we talked about sex and super. Oh, the, the remote. I don't, they didn't have sound before, so I always thought it was the Unabomber who made made that remote control, but it wasn't, right? It was this other guy. Uh, if I remember correctly, he was a black guy. So I remember asking our our CEO that was our fucking professor for the. Uh,
Jones. I'm really fucking up this shit. But yeah, hello, hello, hello. All right, it's working. All right, man, technical difficulties all day long. What are you going to do? Uh, so anyways, you're telling them about the remote control that a guy made at the ADX Supermax. Uh, what? Their TV, tell them about the TVs. Uh, where they got a long ass. How did they change the channel? I, on the I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember how they changed the channel, but I know that. I this think guy. they push a finger through a hole, maybe, to push a button on I, to I, turn the I channel. I don't remember how they fucking did it. But I know that this fucking dude, he made a remote control out of cardboard, cardboard box and fucking, I don't know what else he used. But anyways, he's the same dude that uh, he had built a, a fire retardant suit out of fucking newspaper and started to sell a fire. And this is why they they move them around every so often. I, I forget how long it is, like eight weeks or fucking four months. I don't know how, how long the, they allow them to stay in each cell. They do that so they don't get comfortable and do fucking things like that. And that same guy can get out of his cell whenever the fuck he wants. Um, from what I understand, remember that our CEO, I forget, his, was it Thompson? No, was that Thompson? Thompson, yeah, yeah. No, Thompson was the freaky counselor at the camp. Here's two Thompson. The one who did our culinary teacher, yeah, yeah, and then and, and then Thompson, the counselor. Yeah, he was the one that was telling the stories. And that was said that, Tom's uh, favorite counselor. He got out and confronted two of the CEOs and told them that he was you know, not going to do shit to you guys, but just letting you know that I can get out whenever the fuck I want. And sure enough, he did. And did they, did they keep letting him out? From time to time, or what they do after that? I don't know. If I fucking didn't fuck with them, probably. I'm not sure. Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell a story. I, I never, I never told you. I don't even know if you guys know this. Um, so you know the uh, flood drains out in uh, the, that little courtyard where they have the break room sometimes you know, for they let us eat out there. Yeah. So um, they got all clogged up with weeds and stuff. We have you know, we have storms. It's Colorado, right? And one of the maintenance guys, he, he retired from there, but but uh, I don't know if you remember the guy who retired. They threw him a big party and stuff, but he was always smoking. He was the guy, he'd always, every, he's smoking every outside, always by the rail. And maybe it was before you guys, your time there. So anyways, they needed a volunteer, and they asked me to come clean those drains. Says, so I had to crawl up this long drain, and I did all day long just scooping, just sludge and everything out, right? We were all done. He lights up a cigarette, and he goes, I bet you wish you could have one of these. Oh, I go. I sure do. He goes, he threw me one. He goes, you gonna keep your mouth shut, right? I go, I swear to God, man. And I sat there and smoked two or three cigarettes with him. And a couple of times, and I never told us all till now. And on that, I'm, and, and I'm out now. So it's like, the guy's retired. And, and if you fig figure it out, what are you going to do? So I never told anybody because, you know, I don't, you know, I, I, wanted, I wanted more cigarettes, but I just, that's just how it is. And uh, there was another guy when I used to play my guitar. Remember, I used to play my guitar out there by the, uh, after the warden left, I'd be in front of their office playing guitar. One of the CEOs, I won't even say, say who, he'd ask, he'd ask me if I know a song like Creedence Clearwater Revival. And he, 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 when I start playing, he'd drop a sugar and he'd keep on going. I never told a soul, man. Beardo. Uh, I don't put him on the spot. He might still be there, man. But I, I, I never I told him. I never told a soul, but, he's, you know. Uh, he's a really good CEO. He was. He, he'd catch you smoking in the bathroom. And he, I remember one time he came in and we were smoking in the bathroom, and he goes, "Ah, I got gotcha! you!" And he just laughs and he goes away. And then right? He used to fucking announce it. I'm gonna go do. He's gonna go walk. Put your shit away. And fucking let you know ahead of time. Yeah. Put your shit away. He was cool. He was cool as long as you're cool with him. Yeah. You know, because one time I asked him a question during a count. I forget what it was, and he goes, "Man, you gonna rub me during count, man?" Because, you know, they can only count. That's why it takes two of them, because they that way they can count to 20. Like, right? oh, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But I did piss them off that night. <laughs> so who was that? That's true. Uh, that one CEO. He was kind of a dick. He was strong. Roman. Right? Roman. Oh, no, no, not Roman. Nito. Neto. Oh, no. no? no it was a one. Was <laughs> but I remember they were looking for me, and I was stuck downstairs with fucking red. Red cell, and I was like, I don't want to fuck up the council, I'm gonna stay here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what you but, would say. But you stay did fuck up. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, do say that, yeah. But I was downstairs, not, not in my fucking range. And I guess they were looking for me at all over the fucking place. And then we saw me, he's like, and I was like, Are you sick? Stay close to here, see where we're at. <laughs> hey, man, that, that's how it goes. Maybe fucking go help count. It was fucking freezing outside. I was just in my tiny town. 
<laughs> hey, do you guys remember the time at the camp, dude, when uh, then the Paisas freaking put a um, bubble gum in the in the door of? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he made, was pissed. He made, he made everybody go on he lockdown. Made, he, he, Oh, that's right. He Perfect. kept us outside of the building. He wouldn't even let us in the building. Yeah, he was pissed. He's like, I'm locked out of my office. Yeah, you're, you're locked out of your out. house. You're locked yeah. out of your house for the, yeah. that whole weekend, and we were just stuck outside. It was the whole sucked. weekend. Oh, that sucked, man. It was a holiday weekend, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, I remember just being at the chapel. Right there, that that sucked, room, man. Uh, and there was no one. Remember, we were all tired. People were just sleeping like homeless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are homeless. <laughs> no, we were. Some people were fucking being dicks and just having the music on Yeah. So yeah, that will remind you that you were that you were in prison, man. Even though we didn't have a fence, guys. There's signs that says "out of bounds," psychological prison, right? That little fence for the baseball field, or oh, on the side that, yeah, but you could walk to the road without a fence. There was a little yeah, three for, for the baseball the field, little, just a little. For the there base. was one along the baseball field, and there was and a, then down at the main. It the divided main us because there was a was golf course a, next it was door, like a cattle barrier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cattle and barrier. A shitload of gopher holes. Oh yeah, the go for holes. holes. Yeah. If you if you were a runner, God bless your soul. He didn't beat your ankle up there. Oh yeah, that kind of runner. Yeah. Oh oh that oh the other kind of runner, not the one who runs at three in the morning, right? No. <laughs> what do you call it? It was pretty interesting to see that, but none of that happened at DBX because that was a different. Yeah, those guys. <laughs> I mean, environment for sure. A cigarette in prison, like in a USP. They won't even sell you a Marlboro. It'll be some kind of rolly for 20 bucks. I mean, you got to know somebody just to, if you want a real cigarette or 50 bucks. I don't know, man. I think a pack of, uh, over there. I think somebody, one of the guys from the FCI told me he found a fucking pack of cigarettes in the trash can. If he, he was on one of the orders, I think he said he sold it for 300 bucks. 300 bucks. And then in a medium, they're what, maybe 10 bucks for Marlboro? 10 bucks a cigarette. In a low security, that's a number two security. What's that? Maybe five bucks a cigarette? Maybe they still got a fence. Uh, uh two yeah. tunas, man. Two tunas for one, which is a dollar forty-five for each tuna, so about three dollars a cigarette. But you could get a pack for forty bucks, fifty bucks. Oh yeah, I, I've seen them low as low as twenty bucks a pack, but then I've seen them as high as a hundred dollars a pack. You know, depending on you know how how many how much stuff gets through, you know. Uh, but you know it's a big difference, and you're getting you're getting a real cigarette at at the camp. You're getting a rolly for twenty thirty bucks at a P, USP. You're getting a, rolly, a real yeah. cigarette for a three bucks. That's fucking made out of already chewed tobacco. Oh yeah, because the guards will well, chew, chew and they'll spit the shit. Yeah, so they get the shit and they roll it up. Yeah, guys go along clean, they scrape it, they whatever. I mean, it's nasty yeah. shit. Here you go, twenty dollars. Yeah, but I tell you, so the the COs at a camp and the, and COs at a USP. At a camp, they know they're going home. They know their family's not getting threatened. Because uh, at USP, you know, the, the guys say, hey, man, you know, your wife, uh, she goes to 7-Eleven at 7-10 every, every morning before she goes to work at that at that high school on 26 uh, Larky Boulevard, you know, over there. And they, they tell them all the shit. And they go, and if you'd like her to keep doing that, uh, you're going to bring in. You're going to stop. Uh, she's going to stop on the way home. And there's going to be a package here. And you're going to pick it up. And you're going to bring it to me. Right, and they don't, and that's all they say, right? Uh, and then now they got that threat, right? It's not even a threat the way they say it. you go to camp, we don't need them, like, stay away, we don't need you for nothing, man. And I'm not giving no secrets away, we just don't need you, man, right? So it's a big so the, the CEOs treat us a lot better because they know they're going home, they're going home uninjured, uninjured every day, you know. Some of them, yeah, I mean, that was true. some of them, especially the ones who work overtime, they, they get extra hours that are coming over from the USP or the medium. They didn't want to be super cops to us. Was that captain, that little, oh, that captain. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah Mr. With a little, little, little goatee, <clears throat> Mr. Yeah. Yeah, sure was, man. But, you know, for the most part, remember how they treated us at the, at the US, at the Supermax? How did they treat you guys? I don't know. They locked you. They, they locked you in a, in a, a most already secure prison, and then they put you in another room and lock you up. Yeah. <laughs> Behind that glass. Right. 
Because what you got to protect the carrots and the potatoes. You got to protect the cabbage. The cabbage is very, yeah. very secure. <laughs> but remember how they did treat you, kind of like almost like. Remember they would chop it up with this kind of and on the line and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thompson would talk, and tell us his stories about yeah, it. They were fucking cool as fuck. They were cool to me. I yeah, they were cool to me. I couldn't believe it. I asked him like my fourth day there. So, what what's going on here? You guys are like almost treating me like a real person. What the fuck? Is, what's up? What's up? They go, we got to work with you every day, man. You want us to treat yeah, you like a piece of shit? We can the, do that. You should have seen what it was like during the, the during the pandemic, though. Oh, did it change? You should have seen because what do you call it? Uh, the you were there, weren't you? But I was I was in Orderly by that time. Yeah, what do you call it? Because they uh, they pulled all the help, and the guards were forced to do all the work we were doing. Oh, and what do you call it, dude? When they came back, they said they were like so grateful for the campers. <laughs> they were like, "Oh, how we missed you guys." Because they were forced to do the trays, the chopping. There was because they, they had no all the grunt house. work. Oh they, shit! They really took they took us. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You remember Miss T? Remember <laughs> T? Hey, if you didn't cut it on her line, you're out of it. You're you, you're fired pretty much. Remember? She gave you like one little chance your first day there, and you you, so I was you couldn't to keep go up. The ABX to go work at the, at the camp, right? Because I was an old Miss T was gonna. She was going to come in and do something up again, but it wasn't as fucking easy. But she said, if I need your help, you're going to help me. Though. I said, okay, I will. And Miss Friday didn't want me to leave. Yeah, I remember, I remember her. I was going back from surgery, and she, I told her that I put in my paperwork. Before I had Miss T signed I should have had her sign the first, and I didn't. Miss Friday fucking denied it, and fired my ass, I guess. And, uh, that's why I came to the FCI. Shit. But it sucked. I should have stayed because Ms. Brian and Levy were my favorites. They, they were cool at, at, after you got to, after they accepted you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they were cool. My favorite was O'Brien. She was cool. Oh, O'Brien was good. Yeah, she was cool. Yeah, she was cool. So. She took good. She was always pretty solid. Hey, they all let me remember when we took out the three cakes. Were you a part of that in the van? Yep, I remember we were, for our, for our uh, dots. It, it was the hamburger driving us. The guy, yeah. uh, we didn't tell him the story about the hamburger. I mean, they didn't hear with the sound. So this, uh, we haven't even told them about uh, how things get out of the supermax. <laughs> yeah, just uh, if you're at the camp, don't ever eat cilantro that comes from from the supermax. So you want to tell them <laughs> the whole routine? Like, so the, the, they they get the best food at the supermax, right? I mean, they get top of the line. It's the same menu, but they get uh, the spices, the herbs that we got. You know, I mean, all the oils for the grill. I mean, that stuff's. I used to get jealous. I go, how come they get this good food? And I got to go back to the camp. They go, well, you want to you want to stay here tonight? It wasn't find all, out? It wasn't always that good though, because I remember with remember with turtle, with going to the cooler, I'd seen I'd seen boxes that were like a year old. They were just frozen solid after a year, man. So it's not like they were getting the best food. But though. they get the Briars ice cream. You now you got all the best snack. You know they the chicken fajitas would have fresh peppers yeah, they did and get onions and, and stuff, all that though. stuff. Remember they got the the cold trays. Huh? Yeah, kiwis. Yeah, they got good fruit, fresh fruit. I mean, they, they had it, you know. I mean, uh, I, 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 this guy John, who's been on, comes on here like he says. Uh, he said that, that he did. I don't know, ten years something. He said that was the best food in all the prisons he's been in. He said it was. It, he had no complaints with the food. Huh? Oh yeah, that he won with, with the leftovers. Yeah. Yeah, that's I did too, man. I always did, man. Anybody could. Yeah. I got a chat with friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was definitely experience, but I don't miss it. I don't know. Because what I one thing I learned the best day out there, I mean the best day in there is still not as good as the worst day out here. Yeah, that's true, man. That's true. Yeah. I mean those guys in the super max up. What they call yard is a little is a dog cage, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little cage. They open up a chute. They go in. It's a little cage. Yeah. Once in a while, there might be somebody in a cage next to you that you get to talk to. But they don't. They don't even like to do that. One thing I remember was Barnett and I. They, they left me in a. They left us outside. One time, remember they never came to back to pick us up, and it was like nine o'clock, and we had to walk all the way from the camp. I mean, all the way. Oh, from you, the you decided to walk. We had to. They they left us. What do you call it? Yeah, I mean, and, well, and, I mean, I've been. I've it, was, it was horrible. Hours I was freezing my, it was freezing my butt. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who was the driver? 
freaking what's his name? Freaking dude from Seattle. Chapaki. Dude, that guy was ugh. Oh, I, for, I forgot. I was like, dude, because we you know the bad used to get full. Oh, come back, bro. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Come, come back. And then there, <laughs> and there we are, dude. Four. We missed the count. We totally oh, missed yeah. up the six o'clock. Yeah, we're over there waiting. waiting and and waiting, they're, they're, waiting. they're supposed to keep you there and count you inside the supermarket, right? You're going to miss the count. Yeah. But when you're out there, so down there, they're all full. Yeah, I know. And we had the cop went down on lockdown because of me and Barnett. Yeah, yeah. It's happened before, man. <laughs> Because and it was Chapaki, dude. They freaking they forgot us. Missed dinner, everything, dude. It was horrible, dude. So I remember when I got the three sheet cakes out of there, man. I do remember. That was enough fun. So I, I mean, still to this day, about, I still want to know how you smuggled that in your underwear. I just I, well, you know, <laughs> no, but I had that all set up. I mean, they basically opened the door for me. Let us let us bring those cakes in on all the all the different security levels. I I had set, set that up a week ahead, man. You know, white collar criminal like we are, right? Uh, but I got them all through, man. I mean, they, 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 they you know, remember that? And but then you know what I did? I handed it away a hundred different people. I gave a free piece of cake to, man. Oh, I gave everybody. Be, I didn't be, charge be, nobody, man. Be honest, Sean. How much did you? Really no, make everybody was thinking. Uh, I heard you good. made tunas off. No, that, no, no, dude. no. Because you know what I thought would happen? Uh, or they would pull me up on it at our dap, a pull up, right? Mm -hmm. And they would say, "Hey, man, you brought that cake in. How much did you make and all that?" I said, "If I give it all away, they can't pull me up for shit." And I still get my cake and eat it too. Yeah. Remember, there's a line, eighty inmates, and I was just only going to give twenty people a cake. And where did all these people come from? But I sat there, I skimmed all cake because I thought somebody was going to rat me out. That's why I didn't make no money at it, right? I guess you know you you learn your lesson in prison, right? Yeah. You know, what I mean, because that's all I needed to get kicked out. I just a whole year off my sentence because because I want to make what forty bucks worth of commissary or some shit, man. Yeah, and some of them there was the some worst, snitches, dude, man. I know. There was some straight up fucking dry snitching going on. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Oh man, remember the dude we had him in the hot seat? What's his name? Uh, he told on everybody too, man. Uh, they finally kicked him out. I uh, remember. Ever? Uh, you remember uh, the guy had him in a little chair, and they were. I can't remember his name. Uh, so it ain't important. Who? Who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you were like, yeah, you were like the. Were you and I the same word out? We were all there at one for no, one. No, you were after one, me, huh? Every three yeah. months you do a different phase. So we were there for at least three months. Yeah, together. you started after I did. I was Woody Clark. Did, did I? And you were Bertie, you were Bertie in, huh? When did you get out? Yeah, shit, dude. I, I finished our dap at me at 20. I got out in 19. Shit, seriously? Yeah, RDAP. So we, RDAP way our, after, we have right? a Freaking. we have a camera a camera lady here. She wants to know what is our dap. <laughs> Residential drug. Right. Residential, Residential drug abuse program. Yeah. Residential drug abuse program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an in-house residential drug abuse program. Look, we're nine, in New Mexico. The state prisons here have RDAP. It's similar. I think they get ninety days off or something. But ours gets you a year up to a year off, depending on how much time you got. If you, she's asking you guys how, how long were you in there? Uh, I got five years for a phone call. Five years for a phone call. Non incriminating. You can say shit about anything. All, yeah. All, the, all conspiracy. All my, rat, all my rat said was uh, if I if you wanted me to sign pick up a check, if he was going to be passing by. And, and, and what's it take to get convicted? Conspiracy, right? Conspiracy with intent to purchase and distribute five kilos or more of cocaine. If if I see a guy across the street, right, and uh, the feds are watching this house and stuff, right, and I just wave to him one day, and the feds raid his house, and they come out and they go, "We saw that guy wave to him." They come over, they can get me on conspiracy. I don't even know the guys. I just wave to him one day. No, <laughs> that's a conspiracy. And I can I could do five years for that just for waving at a guy. I have no clue who he is. Yeah. That's that's our government. That's our freedom. And let, let, let me let me just make it very plain and simple. And I'm not trying to bring politics into it. Uh, Chavez, and you can agree with me on this, right? Sean, dude, they're going after a former president. What does that tell you about the the, the, the system? If nobody, they, nobody's uh, above the law. That's no, it's not even about that. If they slap you with charges, then you have to fight. For your life to get out of it what's yeah. the conviction rate 
98.9%. You know what I mean? The state charges will pretty much be a slap on the hand unless they're trying to make an example of you. But if the federal government hits you with a charge, yeah, just get your affairs in order. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so would you guys recommend a public defender or paying for a, a, a real lawyer when it comes to the feds? Oh, let, here, let, let's, go, let's go this way. Ask the lady from Desperate Housewives. Ask the Julie and Todd Christie from Who Talk, Knows Best. Ask freaking um, uh, Elizabeth Holmes. Who oh, yeah, 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 All yeah. these people who have spent hundreds of millions of dollars on, what do you call it? They all end up in prison. Yeah. What does that tell you? Hey, check this out. In 2010, I had the same charges. Conspiracy with intent to purchase and distribute five kilos or more of cocaine. Same fucking shit. Now, I beat, I beat that. I was just going to get into that. Was it state? Who wins? No, I'm no, just going to get into it. If you, if you take it to court and win, guess what? You're on a list, right? Yeah, so I, I beat this case, so they were fucking pissed. Yeah, they're, they're pissed. pissed. They're going to get a win no matter what. They're mad. I knew I knew I had already won the fucking case months prior, because so I hired a team of five attorneys who were ex federal prosecutors, and I hired a DEA expert. Uh, that DEA expert is when I hired him, he came in and he said, "Okay, we already won the fucking case. It's a fucking bet." Took paperwork that he fucking did in two thousand eight, switched the fucking name out for my name. Lied to the federal judge. That's how they got my warrants for my my type my home for my home everything. And they watched me for one fucking week, so that was great. And that whole week I was in Miami. And I wasn't doing anything. Um, they didn't find any fucking dope. Nothing. I was facing twenty to life at that time, and I said, "Fuck you!" And, you know, and I didn't know how the feds works and like the guidelines that you have to work on. So I hired all these fucking attorneys and everything. So I, I won, I beat the fucking case, fair and square. They were fucking pissed. They ended up, they were gonna fire the feds instead of firing them, they, they transferred them to different states. <clears throat> they followed my ass for like two fucking years, not just not. Every fucking day they would be on you. Yeah. Um, so they, they, this, come, they come back with charges, shit, right? shit that yeah. I, got, I went to prison for happened in Denver. I don't know nobody in Denver. Now my rat was one of my employees. I didn't know that he was fucking going to Denver, right? And he got busted over there. I didn't know he was going to this much. I fucked up because I didn't look him up. Because back in 2010, I looked at everyone's paperwork. I knew who ran me out at that, at that time. And um, <clears throat> sure enough, you know, it was fucking sealed like seven different times. Oh, sure. And I pulled him up. And uh, so I knew who ran me out. So, so even if the people who win, because I, I, no, so I, 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 so I, so, I mean, you won the, the first one, so, won, yeah, but so, then they come so back the at you Denver, years later. I didn't, have, I didn't have shit to do that, but since they wanted my fucking ass, yeah, so, you're on that list, they, man. Because they wouldn't let me bring the case to New Mexico because I would, I would beat it. I would beat it there because I would have my, my judge. Yeah, my judge was, you're innocent. I didn't have fuck to do with it. They even told the feds, we lied to Mr. Chavez so that. He wouldn't know what was going on, so he wouldn't get upset. But this dude going to fucking Denver, this and that. The fence knew that, the judge knew that, everybody knew that. Like, I didn't know what was going on over there. I had nothing to do with it. But since I beat the case in 2010. Yeah, that pisses them off, man. Fuck you, bro. Yep. They're, they're going to get, get you. If it takes 20 years, they're going to get you. Here's another story, just for the record, too, similar to Chavez's. Remember Dr. Halbron? Yeah, 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 yeah Doc. Yeah. Se- seven, seven times. That the FBI investigated him and it was on the seventh oh, time. Oh, he's another one he told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventh time, the FBI like so. If they want you, they're gonna get you. Yeah, yeah. yeah they what do you call? It? They did for seven. Uh, what did they call it? Because he was a doctor that was overbilling Medicaid. But at the end of the day, they did seven uh, forensic yeah. accounting investigations, and on the seventh one, they got him for uh, for uh, for typing uh, typing uh, code errors. Jeez. So yeah. 56, 56 months. He was our he was our drummer in the band. We were in a band, guys, a, a real a real rock band. Fifty six months. So they, <laughs> they like I said, they will they will once they hit you. You know what I mean? I know I, I know how many doctors that were there. Like they beat a case 10, 15 years ago. Now they're gonna keep coming and coming and coming. They you know they drop fifteen charges where they use those again. Plus the ones you don't even know about. And then then once they just make up, it don't matter if you win. If you win, you 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 didn't win. 
be they're, just they're be looking you. just be looking over your back for for yeah, years. They cause... don't let a loss go, man. That that oh, they, they take that personal. Yeah. Man. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Can't win with. Well, the I'm gonna have to be heading out. But... He's gotta be heading out. But uh, anyways, guys, uh, maybe I'll have you guys back again. Hey, there's about what eight or nine of us living in Albuquerque now. Uh, still, still yeah, keep we'll in come. touch. Uh, you make. I mean, when you go to prison, uh, I last thing I was ever thought was I'm gonna make a friend in prison. Let alone be hanging out three, four years later with guys I did time with, man. Uh, you know, I, walk in the guard telling you. Get out, I'll go visit you in San Francisco. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never thought it was coming to Albuquerque. I was it wasn't even in my top 100 list, uh, top bottom 100 list. <laughs> but here I am, man. And now we're, we're all working together. Imagine that, man. Yeah, yeah. So you never know what doors are going to open, man. I mean, shit, man. It's uh, life's good today compared to back in Florence. I'll tell you that, man. Yeah, I don't miss 2019 or 20 at all. Or would, you, would you guys say you did some growing up in prison? I know I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, reflect yeah. for sure. You know, I I did I did 19 months. The way I look at it, the world did 19, uh, 12, 12 of those 19 with me with with COVID. Yeah. But so I had to do seven on my own. But at the end of the day, that was still the hardest seven months. I lost a sister in prison to suicide and addiction. So you know, it makes you come out with a new perspective for sure. I reckon that, like Katie, she's uh, got a. A pretty big case. I don't want to say what it is because it's 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 national. It's it's huge. I'll tell you after. But uh, Katie, if you want and make these guys to talk to you, and I know Larry, especially, uh, they may be able to be, give me some more. Uh, you know, put some more tips on how to get through this because she's a year on pretrial already. Katie, if you want to reach out to Sean, I I, 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 I talked to her on the phone. I, I, totally, uh, he has my number. To get hold of me if you need any. Uh, or, or like I said, especially with the, if it's restitution or any question like that, definitely reach out because it's, yeah, she, it's, she needs our, all of our, our help. And there's a lot of people on here. I know they're all getting ready to get sentenced. Some have already have, and, and uh, it does it does end though. Let me tell you to this at yeah, the end of the day. You're gonna know who's your true friend. Yeah, that's yes, definitely true. Yes, yes. Family. and family. Oh, God. I went I went in married, came out divorced, and at the end of the day, in the uh, 20, uh, 20 months I was gone. Uh, I only had, oh, I had a ton of friends when I had the money. You know what I mean? Charles? Oh, yeah, those I had, a ton, of friends. I had a ton of friends. But at the end of the day, I had three, or, I could count them on one hand, three or four, or three or four that wrote me. So let's put it this way motherfuckers are going to act the way they act when you die. Because basically, at your sentencing, that's your fucking, that's your funeral. And when you're in prison, you're out of sight, out of mind. If motherfuckers out here in the street are going to behave the way they're going to behave when they're fucking dead. So you get to see it. Yeah, like I said, I had a ton of friends when I when I was in there. I had three or four that would email me and actually write me, and the same applied to relatives. At the end of the day, nobody really, they you know, uh, he's got a good. These point. two guys no, are no, my true friends. There's a few of us. That we all, if you find your true friends in there, there's. I heard you get one superpower. You, when you get out, you can read the, the, through the bullshit of of people. You know, that's a real person or a phony person. That's right. We, we, we get that one power. We get a gift. But, you know, you know what I mean? Right on. Well, Sean, I'm not going to be hitting on that here. You right, signing man. off here? Yeah, we'll sign off, guys. Thanks for watching. Good luck, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Who's out there? Is there anything I can answer or anything you guys want to ask? Sean knows how to get hold of us. Yeah. Uh, like I said, you're definitely going to be in for uh, a lesson, but hang in there. It does come to an end. Yeah. Thank there you. is Thank life. You. There is life after prison. There's life, a, a, a whole life after Especially prison. Especially after you I do this to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. Give that for shit. Thanks, guys. Thanks. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks, guys. I would read it to Sean.